on to H. This one has a similar feel to letter I in that I think you can take a shortcut. The cosine of pi halves, the shortcut would be, well, here's pi halves. Just think where cosine is when you graph it at pi halves. The answer is, well, it's at zero. So basically you're taking the square root of a half. Square root of 1 over 2, that's the square root of 1 over the square root of 2, which is 1 over the square root of 2, which is the square root of 2 over 2. That is definitely one way to do this, but not the identity route. Let's go the identity route. All right, for this particular problem, I'm going to say, okay, 1 plus cosine, that has the feel of the cosine half angle formula. So if that plays a role of A, okay, so we're going to take pi halves divided by 2. So that's cosine of pi halves divided by 2, which is pi halves divided by 2 or pi halves times 1 half, right? In other words, cosine of pi force. Pi force, 45 degrees, and the cosine of 45 degrees is the square root. 2 over 2. Make sure you know those. Right? Your 30, your 60, your 45, very important angles. All right, now letter I on out here are a little bit different versions. Um, what we're going to have to do is work with this angle measure here. This isn't an expansion of some identity, a double or a half angle formula. This is something we're going to have to play around with the numbers 30. 60 and 45. Somehow adding those or subtracting those or doing doubles or halves to get 255, not going to happen. So what we said to do on these, your first step, you need to find a reference angle. So 255 will put you in quadrant 3. Now be careful. That puts you, what, 15 degrees away from the y-axis, but that's not how we approach these. We always go to the x-axis. So it's 75 degrees away from the negative x-axis. That's our reference angle. All right. Then we say, okay, we're in quadrant three, reference of 75. This is how the, the uh, scenario goes. So let's put it down here so we save our space. The sine of 255 is exactly the same as the sine of 75 degrees with the exception that you're in quadrant 3, and since you are in quadrant 3, that has to be negative. You, 3. Sine is negative in the third quadrant. So, from here, 75 degrees, there's a couple ways we could take this one. We could say it's 150 divided by 2 using a half angle formula. You could go that route. Or, you could call it a, what, 30 plus 45? in which case you would use your sum formula for sine. And I think that's going to be the path of least resistance. So 150 over 2, you know, you can treat it as a half angle. It does work. But I'm going to split this up into a 30 and 45. So my first move after I find the reference is sine of 30 plus 45. That adds up to be 75. And then be real careful with this negative. It's going to have to be distributed through this sine formula. Don't even think we're distributing. Don't get that idea. This is sine of something. It's not multiplication. It's the sine sum formula. So that would be the sine of the first, cosine of the second. And then same, plus or minus, so plus for the sine formula. Uh, we would go cosine of the first, which is 30, sine of the second. 45. Right? In case you're wondering, that's the A, that's the B. Right? Expand it out in the sine sum formula. You do have to watch that negative though. All right, now we got to figure out the exact value of a 30, a 45 for sine and cosine. Um, I guess I'll draw it. Okay, here we are. 30 degrees. You have a 30 degree reference angle, that would be in quadrant one, that goes one, two, square root three, a 45. I got a one, one, square root of two. 
All right, so the sine of 30 would be opposite over hypotenuse. We're looking at negative parenthesis, 1 half. Cosine 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. Cosine 30 would be adjacent over hypotenuse, square root of 3 over 2. And the sine of 45 is the same as the cosine of 45. All right, then we just multiply these two fractions, those two together. Write this as one big fraction. To where to put you? Let's get rid of these. We got equals negative parentheses. That's square root 2 over 4 plus square root 6 over 4. Add those together only because they have the same denominator. We'll call this negative. I'll put it right in the middle of the fraction. That's my numerator. That's my denominator. If you choose not to put it right in the middle, um, you're going to have to take the negative through. That is negative square root of 2 minus the square root of 6 over 4. Either answer is acceptable. I do not care which one you do. That one actually looks more favorable. But what I have cautioned you on, don't let this kind of creep up towards the square root of 2. If it starts creeping up, it's got to be distributed. So put it square in the middle or distribute it through, those are your options. All right, letter J. We got cosine negative 25 pi 12. Well, job one, I gotta figure out what negative 25 pi 12 is. Well, a little reasoning here, I guess. If we had pi 6, pi 6 is 30 degrees. Pi 12 would be half of that. And then I just got to multiply that by 25. I have 25 15 degree angles, and that's negative. Or maybe I'll just take this times 180 over pi. I was just too lazy to go to my calculator. All right. I got my calculator. Here we go. So let's see. 15 times 25. I got 375. Well, negative 375. All right. Now that we have established it's a negative 375 degree angle, we got cosine negative 375. My next move, draw a negative 375 degree angle. Now careful, it is negative. We are going clockwise. That's negative 360. How much further? Well, it looks like 15 degrees off the positive x-axis. So we're looking at a 15 degree reference angle in quadrant four. All right. That being said, in quadrant four, well, let's say the cosine of negative 375, or for that matter, the cosine of negative 25 pi 12 is the exact same thing as asking you what the cosine of 15 degrees is, except for you're in quadrant four where cosine, oh, cosine is actually positive, so positive in Q4. So positive, just for emphasis, don't write a plus sign. Just did. So 15 degrees. Again, two ways to play this. You can call this a 30 divided by a 2, treat it as a cosine half angle, or you can call it uh, the difference of a 60 and 45, or option 3, you can call it the difference of a 45 and a 30. You have three different ways to go about this particular problem. Now, I believe these two are going to produce the same answer. Well, the same looking answer. This one will produce something that looks very different, but it's still correct. So we can go either route. We can do a cosine difference of a 60 and a 45, a 45 and a 30, or we could do a cosine half angle. All right, let's pick one. My personal preference is some are difference, but when you do sum or difference, you got to calculate a few more different angles. So I'm going to call this the cosine of, let's do something different, a 60 minus 45. A little different there. So we're looking at the cosine of the first angle, cosine of the second angle. This is how cosine difference works. Now remember, careful, don't be plus for cosine difference. It's the opposite. And then sine of the first, sine of the second. 
And it's a matter of knowing what the cosine of 60 is, the cosine of 45, sine of 60, sine of 45. I guess we don't have a 60 up here, so let's put a 60 up here. Got a 60. How does this work? Well, 1, 2, square root 3. So let's fill these in. If I have room, hopefully, 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 maybe, possibly. Now yeah, let's try it. Cosine 60, you are going to be a half. Just take a look at your picture, adjacent hypotenuse. Cosine 45 is still square root of 2 over 2. Sine of 60, you are opposite over adjacent. You are the square root of 3 over 2. And the sine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. Multiply these two, multiply those two, and they will have common denominators. Final answer, now let's take one step. Square root of 2 over 4 plus square root of 6 over 4, which is the square root of 2 plus the square root of 6, all over 4. And there you go.